Hello, everyone. Welcome to our last session. Uh, before the beginning of our session, just a reminder, we have a closing remarks at the end of this session. Uh, you are welcome to attend it. Uh, and uh, I'm the session chair in Songhu, uh, and, and assistant professor at Shanghai Zhongnan University. This session is about the pure two-party computation, and uh, we have three talks. Uh, the first talk is about uh, breaking the size barrier, universal circuit means to top tables, as we welcome our first speaker, Daniel Mosler. Yeah, thank you for the introduction and welcome to the last session of the HFC. Uh, my name is uh, Daniel Gamper, and this is a joint work with Jan Dissler, Thomas Schneider, Maximilian Stilbert, who is also here today, Arthur Wiegand and Martin Yanome also here today. And this talk is mainly about a universal circuit from a flow operator on universal circuits. And to start, I first want to give a uh, definition of universal circuits. So, generally, a universal circuit is a special Boolean circuit that was first introduced by Wellian in 1976. And this uh, circuit has the ability to be able to be programmed to um, compute any Boolean function up to a given size. So what does it mean? If we have a function of a particular size, naming its number of inputs, outputs, and gates, then we can find some programming bits to program the universal circuit to evaluate exactly this function. And this can be done for of any function with these parameters. So that's um, basically the idea for universal circuits. So for what do we need them? Um, so the first obvious thing that we can uh, do with universal circuits is that we can obfuscate some computation that we want to embed any uh, computation that we want to hide. Then we can use universal circuits uh, because they can evaluate any function. Um, more crypto related application is in attribute based encryption schemes. Um, in an attribute based encryption scheme, when we set up this encryption scheme, then we define some policies that the person who wants to decrypt the message needs to fulfill. These policies can be like that the, um, the person must uh, be living in some specific country or his email address must be from some specific domain. And when we want to reuse such an encryption scheme, then we can use universal circuits to generalize these um, policies so that we only need to set up this encryption scheme once. And the application I want to focus on this talk is a private function evaluation. I will spend a few slides to introduce this. So first, um, you know probably secure party evaluation, also known as multi-party computation, secure two-party computation, and all of these that sustain, sustain for secure function evaluation. In secure function evaluation, we have two parties, Alice and Bob, and they want to compute a function on their private input. And the, um, the function f is known to both parties, and in the end, they only want to learn f of x and y, but don't want to really reveal any other information about their inputs or intermediate data. Uh, secure function evaluation is usually instantiated by using some circuit representation of the function, um, for example, Boolean circuits. And then we have a couple of protocols that can evaluate this Boolean circuit securely, and um, we have a solution for secure function evaluation. But the problem here is that this circuit is known to both parties. So if one of these uh, parties has some intellectual property that they want to evaluate, then we cannot use secure function evaluation. So this is not a solution for this particular problem. So what we are looking for, uh, we call private function evaluation. So that is that Alice still has the private input, but now Bob wants to input a private function so that Alice does not learn any information about what is computed. And in the end, these uh, two guys only want to learn uh, 
the result f of x, but don't give any information about x and f. And the good news is we can reduce private function evaluation to secure function evaluation by using a universal circuit as public function. Because a universal circuit is a general circuit that can be given any function. And this the structure of the universal circuit does not reveal any information about the computed function, but only the programming bits PF uh, reveals the information what function is computed, but PF can be hidden through secure function evaluations. So we have a solution by using universal circuits. So in the literature, um, Universal circuit was mainly about reducing the size. So then we have uh, some prefactors of uh, universal circuit size. Uh, when this universal circuit was first introduced by Bellingham, we had a uh, size of 5.0 n log n. And over uh, many, many years, uh, we have improved this to 3.0 n log n by uh, Leo et al. Um, published at crypto. And another line of uh, work was uh, more focusing on reducing concrete sizes by some small optimization, but they don't have any influence on these three factors. And what uh, we, in theory, also have as a theoretical result, but never really used in practice, is that we can evaluate lookup tables uh, for general uh, row inputs. Um, in um, the second part was that we have some circuit synthesis uh, in universal circuits, especially for the function that will be programmed to, uh, for the universal circuit. And um, usually we um, only looked at um, circuits that consist of two input and one output gates. And uh, even worse, uh, we still assume that we have some MPC optimized circuit that consists only of AND and XOR gates. But in private function evaluation on universal circuit, this makes not really sense because we can use so called universal gates that can implement any of uh, all 16 possible gate combinations. And so reducing the set only to two gates uh, makes no really sense. So that's uh, where we can also improve a lot on the concrete efficiency. Yeah, and basically in this work, we combine these two tasks and no longer uh, observe them as separate tasks. So concretely, we want to combine circuit synthesis and universal circuit design to minimize the universal circuit size. And how do we do this? We want to um, universal circuits to be able to evaluate row input and omega output lookup tables. So um, our first contribution is that we introduce a new universal circuit construction that we call load based universal circuits, or short LUC. So um, I first want to give some brief introduction about the high level idea how these universal circuits are constructed. So first we have uh, two graphs, um, one graph G and one graph G prime. And the idea is that we want to embed this graph G into the graph G prime. And with embedding, we mean that for every edge we have in this graph, we want to find a pass in this graph between these two nodes. And um, these paths should be edge disjoint. The reason for this is if we observe these two graphs on a circuit layer, then we, uh, we assume that G corresponds to the function that we want to evaluate, and G prime corresponds to the universal circuit. And the paths in this universal circuit are the data flow in this, uh, in this original circuit. So that's uh, why these paths must be edge disjoint because there is real data flowing in these edges. If we have two independent sources for one of these edges, then the whole result is not correct anymore. 
So for the uh, remaining term, we call these nodes of the graph G as important for the construction. So what we are looking for now are so-called edge universal graphs. Um, basically, these uh, G brands that I showed on the last slide should be able to embed any graph with some properties, namely all graphs with n nodes and having a specific pen in and pen out row. And we can uh, do this by using instances of edge universal graphs with uh, pen out, pen out um, one. And we, com uh, we can connect all of our poles to these graphs. And concretely, we need one of these graphs for every um, input and output of our poles because um, we can direct any pass from going from one of the poles through this block to any uh, lower pole. And so we have the property when we have such a building block, then we can find these paths. So basically, we can now reduce the problem of finding an edge universal graph for row pen and pen out uh, to finding edge universal graph for a pen and pen out one graph. And uh, as I so already showed, we have um, some constructions for edge universal graphs with different sizes. So for these edge universal graphs, one of n, we have the first construction of very that size uh, 2.375 n log n. And the most efficient construction to date has size 1.5 n log n. So, and when we use this construction for general row input um, circuits, then we have a total size of 1.5 log n log n. So now we want to extend this construction to omega outputs. And um, what we are doing is we merge some of the poles to some to a lookup table. Basically, in this example, when we have um, row input and two output lookup table, we merge two of these poles, and each pole is implemented as a row input and one output lookup table. The second pole takes the same inputs as the first pole, that's why we packed up them here, so we don't need these edges here anymore. And these outputs are generated independently, so we have two real independent outputs for the same inputs. And that's how we construct um, these um, omega outputs in our universal circuit. And with this construction, we get a total size of 1.5 rho omega n log omega n. So when we look at this construction, then uh, what I make of it is that we have this rho factor in this uh, universal circuit size. But uh, many, many functionalities don't really need high input effects because only small parts of the function can really profit from high input work and for example, any input work So a very small part of the function really can use this to, com to compress the size of the whole circuit. But if we would want to use one of such uh, circuit, then our whole universal circuit has this high uh, prefactor of rho in the circuit size, and that's um, not so optimal. So we are looking here for some trade-off between privacy and efficiency, where we want to mix uh, different lookup tables. And by mixing the different dimensions of lookup tables, we leak the dimensions of the lookup tables. But um, we can get rid of this row factor. And this is what, is what we call varying universal circuits. This is our second contribution, VUC. So concretely, in a varying universal circuit, we have a Boolean circuit of a specific size, theta n log n. And they com can compute any Boolean function f um, for a given sequence of lookup tables of varying input and output dimensions. 
But as I said, this sequence of uh, local pivots is leaked. So this is information that is revealed about the function, and uh, we need to observe what information we can really leak, and if this reveals too much information about the function. But um, there are indeed some applications where we can use our very universal search construction and uh, do not harm too much information. Um, and this is in the area of hardware logic locking, where I can um, input uh, my hardware design to some manufacturer, and um, this manufacturer then can build uh, my chip then back to me. Here, the assumption is that the adversary knows the lookup tables dimension anyway, so when we use um, our very universal circuit construction here, that we don't necessarily leak more information. So that's a rewarded application for VSCs. Another application is in the area of test files. So when we have some real world application, for example, in the car insurance uh, company, uh, there we might have some price calculation that are based on some uh, local tables, for example, depending on what car brand I drive, I need to pay a different price. And this is information that uh, usually uh, the customers know, and if we uh, use, if we embed this functionality into a lookup tables, then we don't necessarily need more information when we leak the dimensions of this lookup tables we use for this. So the idea now for the VOC construction is that we construct an edge universal graphs for pen in pen out two graphs, but we want to extend it to multiple um, inputs, which is by nature and also an original universal circuit not possible, but we can use a trick to merge some of these codes again. Basically, we have if we use um, if we want to construct a five input lookup tables, we can fit this uh, graph into, um, into a subgraph where, uh, where P6 is split into three parts, and every part can be collect two of these inputs. And that's basically what we are doing here. So these ports, P6 and P7, they, their only task is to collect some inputs, but don't compute any output. So that's why we don't have output uh, edges here. And in the end, this last pool then gets all of these five inputs. And here we can implement the lookup table. We implemented um, our two constructions, and I want to briefly show you um, the toolchain of our implementation. So we can implement our circuits using VHDL or very low code, and then we do some hardware synthesis. For this hardware synthesis, we use, we use a JOLIN um, to map this to NetLIN and APC mapping uh, to find uh, some lookup tables representation of this uh, hardware code. For some optimizations, we use synthetic libraries. Like, um, we have some concrete uh, building blocks with which we can implement a huge set of functionalities. I will show you later. And uh, we have some optimization for load output mapping because these standard libraries, they not really support lookup tables with more than one output. But as we want to use this in our work, we have some post processing on this to find some certain representations to extend one output loads to multi output loads. When we have this net list, then we can put this into our LUC or VUC compiler. And this gives us the universal circuit itself, as well as the programming bits to program our synthesized um, hardware and then to the universal circuit. And this we can then use uh, for write function evaluation. Um, there we use the ABY framework for the secure two-party computation. 
and um, basically we are all integrated. Um, our universe is a bit broken, and you see description representation to this framework so that we can use this um, completely for rapid function evaluation. I want to show you some benchmarks, especially sizes for our LUC and VUC construction for some circuits. Um, we see that for all of our circuits, except for AES, uh, we have an improvement over the original universal circuit construction. Um, this goes up to 2.8 for the Manhattan distance. And Further improvements can, uh, our VOC construction can improve over LUC for most of the circuits. Our huge um, improvement is 1.4 for the current super multiplier. And an interesting observation here is that all of our uh, benchmark circuits, almost all, use three input lookup tables. And we can, uh, what I mentioned, we have some building blocks. And I want to show you that most or all of these um, functions can be reduced to these building blocks. And these building blocks are basically full adder, comparator, and multiplexer. These, um, all of these building blocks have three inputs and one output, except for the full adder that has two outputs. And this, these building blocks that can implement many, many functionalities. And this is the reason why most functionalities can be implemented with three foot blocks. Okay, with this, I want to conclude my talk and I'm open for questions. So we have code for this. Um, you can download it here. Yeah. Okay, let's end our first speaker for this wonderful talk. and then provide spot very careful quite easy you have any more questions so you mentioned the law um, on the site of the UC and I just was curious how uh, people are right with the law um, oh. yes um this uh, law about um, this mainly computed for some concrete uh, universal service construction that is based on these uh, frameworks I, uh, I have shown you. Um, oh. Like here we have uh, the frameworks of these edge universal grass constructions, um, and the uh, lower one is basically on um, how can we build such an edge universal grass construction. Uh, that we can really find these paths with these two uh, poles. Oh, I'm sorry, it's for all these specific frameworks. Exactly. Yeah. So if we uh, want to find a better block, on this, in theory, it should be possible, but then we need to go out of this framework. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, thanks for the talk. Uh, I noticed that you're using the UI framework to rather the circuit. Uh, so, is there any arithmetic operation involved in the final circuit? The mathematic operation? Arithmetic. For like the large cube. Um, I don't get the question right. Okay. Uh, so, would you? How the circuit and get the final result? Is this a Boolean circuit? Oh, yes, this is. Yes, the uh, universe perfect uh, construction finally is a Boolean circuit presentation. Yeah. Yes, thank you. Okay, I also have a general question. Uh, is this possible to also hide what kind of was involved? Um, 
So basically what uh, we these uh, poles, uh, usually we want to have some building block that is always computing the same things. And I think it might be a little challenging. I think we can have some upper bound, but I think we need to leave some information because at some point we need to compute something. And if we use to this interactivity, then it's a bit high. And at least the dimension. Yes, the dimension, or at least an upper bound of the dimension must be. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you again. Okay, and now it's time for our uh, second part. The MRI is over the view uh, that from IMFD and our secret is Yijo Yao. Thanks for the introduction. Welcome to my talk on this over the pair. This is a joint work with Chen Ling, Chao Bingxin, Chen Yuan, of our science and university. So, we are interested in reusable non scientific computation for jointly computing a function fxy. Where it is safe to reuse the first message of the receiver. Essentially, reusable NIST allows the receiver to post an encryption of our input so that any sender can send messages to the receiver, who then is able to compute the evaluation of the function. In particular, we are interested in the range H to the K. The reasons are that data types and the computations of real life multiple computers. Are defined over Z232 or Z264. Therefore, it, it is straightforward to translate the programs to circuits or functions over Z232. Besides, protocols based on Z232 arithmetic are usually faster by implementing. To begin with, let's uh, review a couple of paradigms for constructing reusable things. The first is to use a uh, circuit private for polyhomomorphic encryption scheme. This, this approach has the advantage of small communication progress. However, due to bootstrapping, the computation is usually very large. And the targeting computations over the to do take some we are whether they are using such polyhomomorphic schemes. And the second is to use the garbage circuit and operative transfer. Where the sender acts as the coupler, sends the coupling of the circuit to the OT functionality, and the receiver, according to her input, sends the OT choice, OT choice bit to OT. And finally, the receiver can learn the function evaluation from OT output. This approach is an offers a field of communication and the However, in this paradigm, Achieving a uh, reusable security is much more expensive to achieving a uh, than achieving a uh, one shot security. And besides, public circuit is essentially a computational randomized encoding for booling circuits. So the result of this is inherently computational secure the hybrid model. And uh, while we targeting arithmetic circuits Transferring arithmetic circuits yeah. to pooling circuits incurs additional overhead. So we focus on the paradigm of data and the volume, where data and volume can be viewed as arithmetic analog of double circuit and the oblivious transfer, respectively. This approach has the advantage of achieving reusability for free. And we highly rely on a result from China, China is that uh, targeting the arithmetic and C1 circuits for arithmetic writing programs, there are these are perfect data. So our goal is to construct the statistical results for this for a C1 circuits over the K in the volume hybrid model. The challenges are comes from the fact that the algebraic structure 
of this user case span where hard elements are zero devices. For example, uh, we can only interpolation interpolate a uh, linear polynomial over this user case. And uh, so finally, use the random linear combination check that makes no sense. Therefore, we can not directly adapt, adapt the protocols for fields to for fields to this user case. Uh, I would like to mention that uh, in the context of multi-party computation, there are two mainstream mechanisms to deal with this. The first is the speed to the k idea, where the authentication is over a large green extent, a large green speed to the k plus s. However, we don't know whether it works in the next setting. And the second is the calorie idea, where a large green extension of the to the k is used to achieve a negligible function error. And in this work, we choose the calorie idea. So our construction consists of two steps. The first step is to construct a simultaneous list. Our construction, our protocol, is based on calorie and arithmetic, and it can simulate the computations of arithmetic branching program over the to the and to overtime the cost of using a very large free extension, we apply the reverse multiplicity of friendly high intensity. Then we link the simultaneous security to malicious security. Uh, since we introduce IMP into the context of this, we as the malicious adversary now can debate by a debate from uh, IMP encoding. So we design a new technique we call it non manifold MFE to deal with this issue. And for the other cheating behaviors of the malicious adversary, we can adapt the existing methods from color field to color ring. So what is color ring? Basically, the ring extension is very similar to field extension. Elements of a color ring one to one correspond to polynomials over the P to the K of degree S and D. And we have that if the calories degree D is tension degree D is equals to one, then the calorie belongs to a modular ring. And if K equals one, calorie belongs to a field. And uh, furthermore, we have that uh, calorie GRT to the KD modular T as a moment of the field, FT to the D. We also have a calorie analog of the Schwarz Zippo lemma, which is very crucial in finding the security, finding the soundness error, the security proof. For such that uh, for a random element alpha of the calorie is a uh, root of a polynomial of three R, the probability is unquanted by R over P to the D. So we would like to introduce our tool, degree D MFV, which has been widely used in the multi-party competition setting and also in the general knowledge setting. Uh, it essentially it consists of two maps, uh, where the map map, map phi embeds m elements into one element of the, of the extension, and the, the map of the side even the production of the elements from the extension returns to the production of elements from the field, from the base color. And there are implications that phi is a linear map with limited multiplication capacity. And essentially, it can be released arithmetic operations of a base color ring and its extension. We have, and uh, finally, we can also extend the, the, the definitions of who find psi to establish a matrix multiplication relation since uh, they are linear. Uh, we list some specific properties that are used in this work. Firstly, we can always assume that uh, map phi embed an O1 vector into one. And with this assumption, the color ring is actually the direct sum of kernel, kernel psi and image of phi. Moreover, when restricted to image of phi, the psi is a bijection. 
And uh, we also have the efficiency, uh, the asymptotic ratio of E over M, namely the overhead of using RMFE is projected to the degree of RMFE, which is our constant. So let's start with a uh, toy example of data. Suppose f is a linear product function and f can be represented by a nearly upper triangular matrix with the second diagonal or minus one and each other meaning entry linear functions. A, a data of f divided by n is obtained by multiplying two random upper triangular matrices A and B on the right on the left and the right respectively. And uh, since uh, the main diagonal of A and B are all ones, the determinant of M is equal to the evaluation of M, namely FXY. And we can find that uh, each entry of M are linear functions of the input. So that uh, suppose uh, the receiver holds X and the sender holds Y. The receiver can learn the whole matrix M, generally the data by they invoking a uh, volume functionality, where the receiver equals with x and the sender equals with coefficients. So our goal is to jointly use the uh, branching programs over the k for m instances. This uh, induces uh, m pairs over the k and the ai, pi are selected by the sender. So, uh, let's find the sign the uh, MFV of degree three. Receiver at the center firstly computes uh, use the map five to compute the uh, instances of the uh, array. Uh, since the phi and psi are said to be linear, the computation needs to be encoded over the array is essentially LXY. And the psi returns it back to M instances of the data. And the method of m equals to a times x, y times b, we have that the sign is essentially equivalent to m ds over the to the k. The equation is true by the definition of degree three r and b. So, so by calling a uh, ideal functionality of volume over the uh, calorie, the zero less m. And he can output, he can use the function evaluation from the sign. However, M contains more information than the sign. And essentially, the leakage is M's projection on the kernel of psi. This is due to the fact that the psi shifts the limit phi to the projection. So, our solution is to that. That the sender must M by a random up triangle matrix C, where C, each entry of C is an element from the kernel of psi. So far, we have completed the semi the construction, and based on that, one can uh, find that the, the malicious adversary can cheat by evading from data or evading from MMB. Uh, we consider these two cheating behaviors separately. In the first condition, only the sender needs to, need to compute the data. Uh, and we can we can get methods from the book of Jupiter and Shai. And in the later case, which is much more, much, much more complicated, since both sender and receiver need to compute the MFE. And uh, it's much harder to solve in a statistical way and uh, without the increase of ground complexity. For a better illustration, that's what would happen if one is dividing from MMB encoding. Let's consider a simple case. Now the goal is to construct the volume from over this to the okay, from volume of the priority. And then like find the sign the uh, MMB of degree two. Now the sender holds M A vectors and M B vectors, and the receiver holds M scalars. The sender uses the map phi to obtain instances of the calorie, and uh, also samples a uh, 
Doar nu vreau să producă două sine. Then she feels that A and B prime with polyfunctionality. Well, the receiver on the other side reveals alpha and sends alpha to the volley. The volley is eventually returns to B to the receiver. B is supposed to be A times alpha plus B prime. And the receiver outputs the side B. So, for the, for the correctness of this construction, it is easy to verify that by the definition of degree 2 R and B, uh, if for issue I, we have that uh, BI equals to AI times R by I plus BI. And uh, for security, it also it is also easy to give a uh, to approve in the semi-organized setting. However, in the relation setting, uh, for example, if the sender is profit, we cannot uh, construct a simulator that can extract the AI for any A that is provided by the property uh, sender. In fact, the simulator can extract the AI by the only if A is a vector over individual part. So the idea is to enable the simulation uh, instead of forcing A to be a vector over individual part, we suggest the definition of R and B itself. So we propose the, the notion of the manual R and B. The definition seems very very complicated. Uh, I will just give some intuitions and uh, skip details. The let's look at the first part, the first property. The first property is a generalization of uh, original MFB. It's very, actually very similar, except that uh, we should do some randomness into it and make it a randomized MFB. And uh, for the second property, we, the second property is for the extraction in the simulation, and we define the extractability. Suppose that the capital Y is uh, provided by uh, malicious, uh, by, by, by malicious adversary and is not in the image of prime, image of prime. And uh, this property allows the simulator to accept a Y that's the output distribution of the simulation is statistically close to that of the real execution. So this completes the proof and uh, we obtain the malicious separate. <coughs> Therefore, upgrading RMB to some other allows us to construct the uh, relationships. So, let me finally uh, show how to construct the uh, number of Our idea, however, idea is that to inject the randomness and make it uh, have to have a verification structure. In more detail, our construction consists of two layers of RMB. The first layer is a standard RMB, and then the second layer is a standard RMB, where is a, which is a generalization of RMB. Uh, we just uh, additionally captures the multiplicative relation between an intermediate calorie and uh, its expansion. The construction of extended MMB is very similar to that of an OVC. And uh, now we come to the construction. Let phi 1, psi 1, and be a MMB, and phi 2, psi 2 be an extended MMB. Uh, the numerical MMB map phi is defined by first assembling a random vector R. And we first compute the phi one xr, and then we use phi two to map xr phi one to the other, and the output of phi one xr, and we obtain the general result. And for the numerical element we map the sign, and uh, for even capital capital y of the calorie, we first use the descending element to map the sign two. Only it, and uh, obtains y, s, and e, where e is the element of the intermediate uh, calorie. So, 
the side the capital Y out of out of Y finally you so E satisfies right so one E equals to Y this completes our construction. So in summary we construct some only we show how to construct some units to NIC non implementation for computing branch programs of the UK. And we put forward the notion of Namalebanami. And we also show our construction. This construction allows us to construct the financial to secure reusable needs of the UK. We also would like to address two open questions. The first is that can we construct a number of with better technological efficiency? You can see that uh, due to the combinations of uh, two combinations of MMD, the asymptotic ratio is much uh, is much larger. Those still uh, constant. And uh, secondly, is that can we construct the uh, NIC NISP for any safety of our data to That's all. Thank you. Thank you for the second speaker. Oh, any questions? Uh, I have a simple question. Uh, you mentioned you were working in the OLE, both uh, of the OLE hybrid model. Yeah. Uh, and your protocol is defined on the global ring. Yes. So do you need the global ring variant of the OLE? Yes. So is there any way to construct it very efficiently? Uh, basically, primitive uh, <coughs> for caloric and caloric and semantic. Much easier to realize than primitive for the digital to the arithmetic, very similar to the field. You can view that Lorin is very similar to the color field. So, uh, having in the efficient construction, we can use OT construction, OT based construction. Okay, thank you. Another question? Thanks for talk. Um, I used to implement a uh, code based on ring extension and it shows that the computing is very slow. But, uh, do you have any uh, idea on how we can complete it? Uh, as you can see, we need theoretical issue is high. So uh, I view our study as a beginning study of is over the UK. So it's far from implement practice now. And uh, I don't do not know the details of implementation and how to put it Thank you. Thank you. Other question? Okay. Uh, I have a general question. Is it possible to example extend your construction for other fields other than that to do it. Uh, basically we just uh, for um, motivation is okay or other fields they keep you today fine similar so you really require some similar areas and model reading I model reading Okay, thanks, thanks again for this wonderful talk. And our third talk will be 